Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwendage, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be heading into my least favorite faction, but which has a very interesting archetype that I almost always default to. We're talking about Nilfgaard, of course. The uh, armies of the Black Sun are always uh, interesting to play with. Um, and today we're going to go again with Assimilate. But Assimilate got a little bit of indirect support with some of the neutral cards in the last um, kind of mini expansion, so the Forbidden Treasures, where we're going into a deck that is called Shoop's Creation. So we're going to be using Shoop, you can see him here already, in combination with the new Rune Mage card, because that card is very, very interesting, and we're going to be talking about that quite a lot today. Let's head into the deck building for Shoop's Creation. So Shoop's Creation is a double cross deck where we have a lot of the mainstays in Assimilate involved in the deck. There's a few um, cards that you might not expect. I'll explain those in a minute when we go through each and every single card. But this is the deck list because this is a Shoop deck. Uh, there are no doubles, so we're going to be having a lot of cards to discuss in a minute. Uh, but that's, of course, the prerequisite of Shoop. Uh, so Shoop requires your starting deck to have no duplicates. So that's exactly what we did. We also have the mainstays like Arto and Bralton's and Coup de Grasse, of course. Uh, a bit of uh, consistency with the Jan Calvate and, of course, Rune Mage. Um, I'm going to be going through each and every single card one by one, as always, to explain everything to any newcomers to this game. Uh, but if you're not interested in that, you can also use the timeline down below to skip right ahead to the example matches where we use this deck to its fullest potential. Um, if you want the deck for yourself, the link to the Play Grant website is in the description of this video, so you can go there import it into your own game and also don't forget to click that green arrow over there to upvote the deck because any support is really appreciated. With that said, let's start going through each and every single one of these cards. First up we have the Mage Infiltrator, our first disloyal unit from the start. So one power for four provisions, you put this card on your opponent's side of the board and on deploy you damage the adjacent units by three. So put this in between two, three unit, three power units and both of them will die. If you kill any units with this ability, you move this card back to your own row and remove the spying tag from it. So technically this could give you up to seven points for four, which uh, made this card very interesting again, especially against swarming decks. You can take care of an Eternal Fire Disciple if you're playing Syndicate really easily. So uh, yeah, very, very handy in this deck. Next up we have the Emissary, another disloyal card where you put this card on the other side of the board and you boost an ally by 7, so giving you 6 points because of course you gave your opponent a single point with the Emissary. Danavon Mordehem Hunter, uh, easy look um, if you put him on the ranged row, 3 power and 1 armor for 4 provisions. With a lock on the ranged row or 2 turns of bleeding on the melee row, you're almost always going to go for locks uh, unless there is really no good target. Um, then you will go for bleeding, but locks is usually the way to go. Next up, the Illusionist. We have one of them in here, and we also have uh, one we can play with our scenario card that we'll be showing off in a minute. But the Illusionist, four power for four provisions, and on deploy, you spawn a base copy of a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard on the right of this card and set its power to one. If you already had an Illusionist on the board, you don't set the power of the unit that you spawn to 1. So it just has the base power. Could be very powerful if played on an engine card or something like that. Uh, or, of course, against the Tweersark veteran if you're facing um, the self-wound archetype of Skellige. So that is probably the most useful card that you can copy with this. And we have the Tanat Turncoat, our uh, one of two options to give units of our opponent spying, which we need for our toe, of course. Four power for four provisions and on deploy you give an enemy unit spying. And then she also has an order ability. If you uh, target a spying unit, you damage an enemy unit, that enemy unit by one. Uh, so you can just attack spying units. Um, every single, well, every two turns. So the cooldown is two, but whenever an enemy unit gains spying, you reduce this unit's cooldown by one. And now we have the Squirrel. Squirrel feels like the MVP of this meta. Squirrel uh, just allows you to banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. There's a lot of echo cards going around. Um, so Squirrel will always be able to take one of those out. Very high value because of that, because he also starts at four power for four provisions. And of course, you're at Trovinet's um, channel, so we're always going to try and include a squirrel somewhere. 
Um, so yeah, definitely a very good card in today's meta with all the, uh, the, the echo cards flying around. Then the Nausicaa Sergeant. The Nausicaa Sergeant is also surprisingly good in this deck. So 4 power for 4 provisions and boosts itself by 1 whenever you play a unit with deploy. There are a few cards in this deck that have multiple deploys. Uh, for example, Bralton's has a deploy ability where he plays a um, Duchess Informant, for example, which also has a deploy ability, which allows you to copy a unit from your opponent. That could also have a deploy ability. So that's 3 deploy abilities in one go. Um, so Nozga Sergeant can go pretty high if you start with him. Even though, of course, he's a very big target to also destroy afterwards. Then the Artvein Tortoise, another very good 4 provision card from Nilfgaard. 7 power for and 2 armor for 4 provisions. But if the armor is removed, he will boost an enemy unit with the most power by 3. So if the armor is removed, this card is only 4 points. Um, if not, this stays at 7 for 4. Then the Obsidian Mirror is the new special card that was included for Nilfgaard and I really like this card even though a lot of people don't think that way. Um, it allows you to spawn one power copies of three different enemy bronze units on their opposite row. So if your opponent has three engine cards on their row, um, on their rows I should say, uh, you can just copy them over but set their power to one. This has two uh, uses, so one you could copy just those engine cards, which is good on its own. But on the other hand, it also gives you three bodies, three units from your opponent, which will factor into the Shalemar in a minute. Because uh, Shalemar actually gets a lot of extra points based on the amount of uh, units from your opponent that you have on your side of the board. And then Tourney Joust. The Tourney Joust is a tactic card for four provisions where you remove an enemy unit shield and damage it by four, or you give an allied unit a shield and boost it by four. Depending on the situation, you can choose whatever you want to do. A uh, little bit of removal, because this deck is otherwise lacking in that capacity a little bit. Then Imperial Diplomacy, getting us into the Create mechanic. Uh, create is going to be very important for this deck. Uh, that's the reason why it's called Shoop's Creation. Uh, we're going to be trying to add as many Create um, keywords into our deck, because with Rune Mage we get more options on Create abilities. So right now, Imperial Diplomacy allows us to choose from three bronze cards from our opponent's faction, so we can choose which one we play. Um, but if we played Rune Mage, we will be getting five options for this, which is uh, definitely a lot better to give you a few options to uh, see what you need in any particular circumstance. Then we have the Duchess Informant, of course, one power for five provisions, another disloyal unit that you play on your opponent's side of the board, and on deploy you spawn and play a base copy of a non-disloyal bronze unit of your enemy, so uh, one that's on their side of the board. So you can just copy something that your opponent is playing. Can be very powerful depending on the card that you copy, and as well gives you double deploy abilities depending on uh, which card you copy as well. Then Imperial Diviner. This is our first Assimilate card. So Assimilate is the keyword that is added to cards that boost themselves by one whenever you play a card that was not in your starting deck. So the Imperial Diviner has this keyword, so she will do just that. Starts at 4 power for 5 provisions, and on deploy you can, she can also purify a unit. Uh, this could be either one of yours or your opponents. Um, especially your opponents might come in handy as well. Taking out Defenders or taking out Veil so you can spy something on your opponent's board. Then the other side of the Assimilate uh, duo, the Assimilate Mages duo, I would call that, is the Mage Torture. Five power for five provisions has Veil and Assimilate. And on deploy, you give an enemy unit spying, giving us another target for our toe, which is really good. And then the Tourney Shalemar. A lot of people don't like this card. I really like this card. Almost always when I play Assimilate, I uh, try to put this card in. Uh, especially now that it's, it is only 6 provisions anymore, 4 power for 6 provisions. If you put this card on the melee row, you damage an enemy Nilf Guardian enemy unit by 7, which is already a lot, so that's just 11 points if you're playing against Nilf Guards. But on deploy, if you put them on the ranged row, you boost self by 2 for each allied unit from a different faction. If you played Obsidian Mirror and those units survive, this card is already 10 for 6, which is good. But if you've added any more during the uh, the game, this could go up to 20 or higher. Um, very, very good card. Very good. I mean, it's just a perfect finisher in uh, an Assimilate deck like this. Now we have Cantarella, another very fun card. I added this card in just for fun. Um, you could also easily swap this card out for for card, uh, probably the more um, competitive version of this deck then. Uh, but Cantarella is just a lot of fun to just pick 
one random card from your opponent. It also works really well with Assimilate, of course, because Assimilate will be triggered on the card that you steal. Uh, but Cantarella, one power, disloyal, and on deploy you play the top card from your opponent's stack. Easy as that. We don't have any ways to put any particular card on top of our opponent's stack, but this is a really good counter against Nilfgaard these days. Uh, especially if they start to uh, tin out their own deck and try to just keep like the Imperial Golem or um, Tibor on top. You can just grab that card from, top of the, from the top of their deck and just clear out that deck immediately. Um, so that's mainly the reason why I put this in against uh, Nilfgaard. This card is just um, perfect. Now we have Bribery. Bribery, because of the create mechanic, is incredibly powerful. It already was um, almost always giving you a gold option because it creates and plays a unit from your opponent's starting deck. Um, almost always gives you a gold option, but with Rune Mage you get five options instead of three. So that is almost guaranteed that you get a really good card with Bribery for just Eight provisions. Now we have Yennefer's Invocation, our uh, tall removal card, where we place an enemy unit at the top of our deck. Uh, this could come in handy later on if you play this early, because uh, that of course would mean that there is a card on top of your deck that you could use. Otherwise this is just tall removal, so it has a bit of a double, um, double use. And now we have Rune Mage, the card that it is all about in this deck. So a neutral card for 4 power for 10 provisions. With the deployability that for the rest of the game, your create effects show you 5 options instead of 3. Pay attention to the fact that it says create effects, not create cards. Because this also applies to our leader ability. We'll be talking about that in a minute. But our leader ability will also be buffed because of this card. Um, on top of that, you will also create and play a Rune Stone. Um, since you have that five option, you also always have the option to choose from all five rune stones. So you can choose from uh, five out of the six factions. There is no rune stone for syndicate, but other than that, you can choose whatever you want, depending on the situation at hand. So uh, definitely a really good card. You'll get the five rune stones, and then of course, from that selection of the rune stone, you'll also get five options. Um, this card triggers assimilate twice. On its own so if you uh, manage to put Bratons on the field immediately as well um, those some or any other assimilate card of course uh, those cards will also be just boosted because of Rune Mage. Now we have Jan Calvate. Jan Calvate is basically the uh, the key to making this deck really consistent so eight power for ten provisions and on deploy you sort the cards in your deck from the highest to the lowest provision cost. At the start of the game you move self up by one position in the deck for each tactic in your starting deck. Uh, we have, I think, four tactics. I just recounted, we have five tactics because of Obsidian Mirror is also counted as a tactic card. So this card will already be at least at position 20 in your deck. Um, so that is already really good. And because of the shuffling, this will be pretty close to your hand every single time. Then the Mushy Truffle, this is one of the two options for carryover in this deck. So it is a resilient location where on deploy you spawn and play a bonded unit from your starting deck. This will always be the Illusionist. Uh, also triggers Assimilate, of course, because of that. Uh, and on order you spawn and play Golden Frot. Again, an Assimilate trigger and Golden Frot gives you another six points, but you can keep that for the next round. Uh, giving you six points of carryover, possibly more because of Assimilate. Then Coup de Grasse. Coup de Grasse is still a very good tactic deck for Nilfgaard. It is an Echo card as well, so you can use this twice during the course of the game. You damage an enemy unit by three, and if you kill that unit, you spawn and play a base copy of it. And Or if that unit has spying, you always spawn and play a base copy of it, so you don't necessarily need to kill it in that case. Very good to double up on Cantarella, or just choose something from your opponent that you want to kill or spy and then just copy it again. Next up of course we have Bratens. Bratens is 4 power for 11 provisions and has Assimilate. And on deploy you create and play a Bronze Disloyal unit from your starting deck. Interestingly, if there would be more Bronze Disloyal units, um, this would uh, also be increased by Rune Mage. Uh, because, but because there are only 3 Disloyal units in Nilfgaard, we'll always get the option from the um, Mage Infiltrator, the Emissary, or the Duchess Informant. I usually go for Duchess Informant, but um, Infiltrator might also be interesting. And if you did have no targets whatsoever, the Emissary is a good backup. So all three have their uses. Now we have Shoop's Day Off. Shoop's Day Off is a special card that only triggers if your starting deck has no duplicates. And then you can choose from three different versions of Shoop. Um, we have Shoop Mage, Shoop Hunter and Shoop Knight. All of these have five options each. 
Um, you need to memorize these a little bit, but because of Rune Mage, you will have access to all of the options and not just nine of them. Uh, so making this very interesting. The mage versions usually have a bit of a weird um, effect to it, like for transforming, for example, transforming the rightmost card in each player's hand into a random special card, moving a random unit to the opposite row, and stuff like that. It's always random. So it's very hard to use unless your opponent starts out with a very powerful unit that you, for example, want to steal because you can move a random unit to the opposite row which is going to be guaranteed that unit, or something very high power, you can split the damage. But of course, if it's one unit, you're going to probably steal it. Then Hunter is more about uh, targeted destruction. So either you play a random card from your deck, you damage three random enemy units by three, which could also give you a nice, uh, that's 13 points. Um, Hunter could also destroy an enemy artifact. So you have an option for that, even if we don't have um, Coyote Heatwave in this deck. Destroy a random enemy. If there's only one on the opposite side of the board, you can just destroy it. But if there's only one, you could probably just use a shoot mage to just put it to your side of the row, uh, of the board, I should say. And then the last one is spawn a random row effect on an enemy row for three turns, which is usually not worth it. And then knight is the most high powered one. So this starts at eight power. Um, the effects are also a bit less. So either damage an enemy unit by four, lock it, boost a random unit in your hand by two, Gain Resilience, which is our second um, carryover option. And then, of course, boosting an allied unit by four. So that are all the options. Shoop is a Swiss army knife in this deck, because you could have him do whatever you want. If you need carryover, Mushy Truffle is still better if you have that in hand. For example, a pass round from your opponent. Because uh, Shoop has so many other options that you can use. Because Shoop itself is not in your deck, this also triggers Assimilate. So a very, very good card indeed, and you should always have access to it because of um, Jan Calvate. And then last but not least, we have Arto Terranova, 4 power for 13 provisions, has assimilate, and on deploy you spawn and play a base copy of a non-disloyal unit you gave spying to during this game, excluding self. So that's why the Tana Third Coat and the Mage Torture are in this deck. You need to give spying to a unit that you want to copy later on with Arto. This would also be the reason why Furcard would be more interesting than uh, Cantarella, but I just like Cantarella a lot. So if you want to just swap those out, you're perfectly fine to do so. It's probably going to even perform a little bit better than this version. Then our stratagem is Colux, so lock an enemy unit and damage it by three, giving you a little bit more control if you start out on blue coin. And of course our leader ability is Double Cross, and we need to talk about this a little bit more. Double Cross usually gives you... Um, three options from your opponent's hand. Because the order ability says create and play a card from your opponent's hand. If you play this at the very end, when your opponent only has three cards in their hands, you'll get all those three cards. You can choose a card to play, and of course you also know what your opponent has in hand. With Rune Mage, however, you get five options. You can do this two cards earlier. If your opponent has five cards in hand, you still see all their cards and can choose from those five cards. Most opponents don't realize this, that Rune Mage actually works like this as well. Rune Mage boosts double cross. It's really, really powerful. Basically giving you insight in your opponent's latter, latter half of their final round. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, a good way to go. And with that, we've gone through all the cards. A little bit more of a longer um, analysis here, because uh, there's so many unique cards in this deck. But uh, I think we talked enough. We need to head into those example matches. So uh, let's go! And our first matchup of the day is Overwhelming Hunger. Usually we do pretty well against monsters with our Assimilate deck, so we're going to have to see. Um, we get Rune Mage and Calvate at the start, which is always good. Um, do I need to banish something with Squirrel? Probably doesn't hurt to keep it in hand here. We can start with the Artfane Tortoise. Um, Imperial Diviner might be good to have an Assimilate card on the board already. Um, and other than that, yeah, let's just try a bit further. We could double up on the Illusionists as well. Uh, although we don't have... Um, I usually don't start with the Illusionist because our opponent doesn't have anything in, in the graveyard yet. Against Deathwish, this might actually be a good option. I'll keep it like this. It's fine. We'll keep it like this. Uh, since we start, I'm just going to put the Artfane Tortoise on the board. That is 7 power to start. And we can just uh, take it easy like this. We get a Slizzard to start as well. I could lock that card. This might actually be a Phi deck. 
I'm not going to be able to banish anything here. Um, I'm going to lock this lizard for now. Um, I can't really do anything else just yet. I could do Rune Mage, but I think I'm going to just plop down Jan Calvate to get our deck uh, sorted out really well here. But this might be a Vi deck. Yeah, Desert Banshee is probably going to go into starting to eat up some units here. There could be a defender later on, so I really should be careful with um, Imperial Diviner here. Uh, I also don't have a spying tag just yet, so I'm going to have to take that into account later on. Uh, so I'm just going to put the Purify down here. Let's start with that. I have one Assimilate unit on the board then for Rune Mage, um, which will put that up to six, but we'll probably start seeing Vi here. Yeah, Hibaya Quacks. Ooh, that's going to put up Arto. Too bad, we get Vi immediately. Okay, so Vi doesn't go to the graveyard. Vi is a card that just plops back into the deck. Uh, we do have to assimilate units on the board now, so that is fine to use Rune Mage on top of. And I'm gonna try to get a lock here. If I can get a lock with the Dustbook Runestone. Uh, so that's gonna trigger assimilate, we do get a lock. So I'm actually gonna grab the lock. Like this, there we go. Another lock on the board. And now we get another Desert Banshee, which is really annoying. Because I can't really do anything against that one. Um, I could get lucky later on with Cantarella, but Cantarella is not in my hand at the moment. I can't really banish anything. Um, but I could put all go all in on carry over here. But Illusionist will not do anything. Or just put Illusionist down. I'll put Illusionist down, it's fine. I don't really have a good card here to play. Uh, I still have two Assimilate Engines on the board, so I think I'm going to keep pushing Royal Decree into Vi again. Or V. Nobody knows how, knows how to pronounce that thing. Yennefer's Invocation definitely needs to stay until the very end. We do have Royal Decree in the graveyard now. I don't really have a good option here. I could do Coup de Grasse. Um, which I am going to do, I think. Yeah, Coup de Grasse. Onto the Slizzard. The Slizzard I'll be putting over here. And that triggers Assimilate at the very least. Um, and that puts something in the graveyard as well. So I'm going to get a second Slizzard in a minute. And that's the Harpy Egg. Would have been a better um, target for me. Mushy Truffle into another Illusionist. And there we go. And that does give me something, and I'm going to eat up the Artfane Tortoise just to avoid, if there is any damage coming in, uh, to avoid that uh, getting a bit too close. They're going to have to start using Leader but Oof. Giant Toad. I could grab the Giant Toad, but I could also get rid of it in a minute. Shalemar is not useful. Squirrel is not useful. I think they're going to have to Leader to be able to get out of this. Let's try. I think they're going to have to leader. Yeah. They're going to use Vi and then they're going to have to leader because otherwise that thing stays on the board. There they go. Okay. That's at least one leader charge out. Uh, I can banish the Toad. I'm going to have to be careful here because I don't have a lot of good options. I mean, I'm going to get all my gold cards, but I don't think that Shalemar is going to be that good in this round. We get Bribery. Um, our toe is out, so we don't even need the spying tag. So I think I'm going to keep it like this. The squirrel is good enough. If they start pushing, I can do Pratens first. Oh, and we get Vi immediately. Oh, it's get... Oh, yeah, and I can't banish the toad now. I mean, I could Yennefer invocate the toad. Um, or just Shoop stay... I think that's probably the better option, even. So now I can do Shoop stay off. Um, shoot mage and then move a random unit to the opposite row. There we go. Thank you. There's another toad. I could probably could across it and then banish it. Ooh, reset the toad. That's not actually too bad. There's nothing to could across. There's nothing to hit with mage infiltrator. So I'm just going to put the squirrel down, I think. There's no echo card here as well. If there's another toad incoming, I can just... I really need that squirrel for that. But there's no real other option here, unless I want to burn through a lot of my cards. So I'm just going to squirrel 
Um, and squirrel away um, the harpy egg, I suppose. And then I'm going to use mushy truffle because I'm going to lose that later on anyway. There's another harpy egg. Could could have grass the harpy egg. I'm going to need bratens in the final round if I want to stay upright here. They're forcing my hand, which is of course to their benefit. The ivory is not going to be that good, I think. Because I'm not going to... Because it's playing a unit. Yeah. It's going to be this. So that even lost me points, by the way. Because they gained three points and they gained another three. And there's the toad. And now I already used the... Um... It's not too bad. I can still use Bratens to grab the toad. And that's going to be enough points to gain the round. With a one card advantage. But yeah, Bratens needs to go. I'm going to have Last Say. Um, which is good. But yeah, Duchess Informant. On the toad, and then I can eat the harpy egg, which gives us another six points. Just not an igni row. <laughs> this could have been an igni row, but 23 points are not gonna gain with Vi, so I can just uh they're not gonna they're gonna have to pass. I still have Yennefer's invocation to grab the biggest card on the board. I can use double cross immediately, but they're not gonna be able to get the points here. I don't know why they're Waiting 23 points is too much. Yeah, I think that was the best thing I could have done uh, Yennefer's invocation will still be good to get the biggest unit on the board, which is gonna be Phi or something that ate Phi um, And maybe if we get really lucky <laughs> I Think this is gonna be the best thing that we get although this is not guaranteed I should probably get rid of Duchess informant tourney joust might get rid of um, a consumer they still have um, a toad in the graveyard. What's going to be the next card? I think the Nausicaa Sergeant. I think that's probably... Oh, the Obsidian Mirror. Oh boy. Yeah, that's, a, that's not going to be anything. So we need to start. And I don't have Coup de Grasse anymore. Uh, I don't care what I spy. So I might as well put the Mage Torture down. And then do Double Cross. And still do an Aeromancy. I mean, Oneromancy is two more cards. So that is one. And then I'm going to put down... Imperial Diplomacy is going to give us five more options. Yeah, that's going to be the better option. So that's going to trigger Assimilate again. That's going to trigger Assimilate again. And then I need to play the Night Raid. It's the only option. Yeah, the Night Raid. There we go. Okay. And we get the Toad, which eats that immediately, and yeah, Shalemar would have been really good. <laughs> I think I should have probably uh, gotten Shalemar, but Shalemar was uh, shuffled into the deck after I used um, after I used Rune Mage, uh, Jan Kalveit, so he was not in the same order as anything else. Okay, I could... No, Bribery's not going to grab that. Cantarella might still be good, depending on how often they... In afterwards, I saw that they still their cards aren't actually really good, aren't really that good. They have a slizzard. I should have kept that freaking tourney joust. They have a slizzard, they have the arc spore, which is gonna tin some more. So I'm gonna let them eat that. Just yeah, there we go. So that's gonna get eaten by the toad, and that thins out their deck a little bit more. I'm thinking to go for bribery first. Um, we get Vi, we get Giant Toad, we get Rot Fiend, and we get Slizzard. Um, I don't have anything to eat anymore. So I'm gonna go for the... Vi, actually. It's seven points. It's gonna be the most points. Although if I can eat something with... Yeah, I'll grab Rot Fiend. Uh, Rot Fiend might be five extra points after this. And I'm, I'm going to get my Obsidian Mirror here, which is really funny. Uh, so Obsidian Mirror on Slizzard, Arcaspore, and Giant Toad. Sadly, I should have put him on the range throw, yeah. I should have put the Rod Fiend on the range throw. Then the Night Raid. And now I'm going to use uh, Cantarella to try and get Vi, but it's going to be really lucky if we do. Okay, that's actually not that bad. I can still eat this, although it's going to hit a one power unit here. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but the good thing is, I can actually just get that final Vi down. Uh, they're not going to win. Yeah, because this is going to be a very big juicy unit. 
So that's 22 points I can just... Um, oh, I mean, you can eat something if you want to, but... There we go, and if we invocate that final card. And we got that down, I think because of Shoop. Is that Shoop swing? That was 19 points from them gone and 19 points to us. So that's 38 and 2 points from Shoop itself. So that was, um, yeah, 40 point swing with Shoop. Next up, we have Blaze of Glory. I think we actually make a chance, have a chance against Blaze of Glory. Um, the fact that their specials do more damage is going to be annoying, but not too much. Um, Calvate is in hand. We're definitely needing that uh, banish here. We don't really need the, the Mage Infiltrator, I think. Purify might be handy to get the Rupture gone. Uh, we're going to be needing that later on, so let's get rid of the Emissary and the Illusionists. We get Shoop as well. Okay. Good start, although we don't have a way to put spying on an enemy unit. It's not the end of the world just yet, uh, but I'm gonna just start with Palvate. Uh, we get the Highland Warrior. Can't really lock that, but we could use the same ability. Yeah, I'm just gonna play Room Mage. Uh, Room Mage is gonna be the better option here. I'm thinking of maybe even using monsters just now. Monsters? Monsters, let's go for monsters for once. We get seven, seven with armor. Or do we have dominance? We do have dominance. So we can just damage that one. Yeah, we can damage and add frost on that row. There we go. That's fine. Blue. So that was six points and then four. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, I also want to have one of those in my graveyard. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm gonna just steal that one, I think. Yeah, let's just do this. Uncreate warrior and bleed him out. The color is also very handy, by the way, to put something down enough to coup de grass it. Um, let me get the Brock for a hunter. Not really that useful for us right now. Nothing to spy, nothing to really coup de grass here. Uh, there's nothing in the graveyard just yet on their end, so illusionist is not gonna be anything either. Uh, I could just purify the bleeding away, but that's a bit of a waste. So I think just coup de grass on... Yeah, let's just coup de grass on the Duchess Informant then. Yeah, it's going to be the better option here. There we go. Uncreate Warrior. Bleed the one in the back. And they normally don't play beasts, so the cooldown on the Hunter is not going to tick again. And now we have the pass, okay. That's fine. Um, there's just the Duchess Informant in the graveyard now. I'm gonna keep that. Um, I'm gonna keep that squirrel. My cards are now from top to bottom, so I'm also gonna get. Uh, I have my two carryover cards. We're six cards up, so I could technically use the complete carryover here. I don't even need to, to drop anything, although I do need to. Yeah, I need a spying tag. Do I get rid of the squirrel? Yeah, because with Blaze of Glory, they're gonna get the um, Jutta back anyway, so the squirrel can go. Come Tidala might be nice. I'm gonna have to kick the Purify, because the next one is Shalemar, and then... Although, I don't really need to. No, the next one is Shalemar, and then we're gonna get the Torture, so... I'm fine by playing my cards right now. So Mushy Truffle first. Illusionist into... Uh, maybe the Highland War Warlord is going to get um, the Veteran after this round. So that is that. And then Shoop, I played Rune, um, Rune Mage. So Shoop is going to have Resilience. Shoop is a really good card though, so if I just play him for Resilience, it might not end well, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I'm losing those 8 points in the next round. If it does, it does, it's fine. They could also just purify the way if they have a purify. They don't. They do just radio, so I'm gonna pass. I have double carry over here. I'm gonna lose two points on Shoop. So that's only six points of carry over, and then they can do cutting sl- Ah, I'm still gonna have one point of carry over. <laughs> Yay! One point of Shoop. That's fine, I still have all my assimilate engines here. So I'm gonna get Shalemar, I'm gonna get the Mage Torture and the Squirrel was, of course, shuffled back in. I could keep the Squirrel. 
But if I can get it, I would like Obsidian Mirror first. That's gonna get that's gonna be three points for our opponent, and that's a simulate trigger, so that's fine. There's another Highland Warrior. I do not need to do anything with that. Although I could I could copy it. With Bratens. Um I could do Bratens. Duchess Informants into the Highland Warlord. Put them over here, that's triggering a simulate again, and then use the yeah, that's fine, I think. Rathus is going to be high enough for a Blaze of Glory then later on. Uh, but it's probably better to do it this way. We get a Gutting Slash on Rathus. That's actually not that bad. I'm fine with getting Gutting Slashed on Rathus. Uh, I'm going to use Cantarella now. Might be getting something juicy. Oh, we get Jutta. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, we get Jutta with Cantarella. That was was very nasty. Another rock for a hunter. Um, I need my remaining... Okay, so they got rid of uh, Kantayala there. That's good. I, I can use um, Coup de Grasse on something else and later on. So that's two... Skellige units, because we need to start counting that for Shalemar. There's two Skellige units on our board right now. There's only one Assimilate engine left on the board. Uh, there, there only was one. We have three more in our hands. But I'm gonna have to play these in order. Uh, I need the Purify to get rid of the Rupture. I need Spying to get Arto, but I need to spy something interesting. So, Impale Diplomacy onto Stunning Blow. Stunning Blow is... That's not correct, is it? Six? Ah, I did use a single... Huh. I could armor up. I could armor up, yeah. I could just armor up Gardens. And that's another Skellige unit on the board. So that's three Skellige units. That's already six points on Shalemar. And I do have final say. We get War of Clans, it's just gonna resurrect that one. He's gonna kill Gardens this time, okay. That is fine. That is fine. I still need that spying tag for something here. I mean, I could bribery and see what I get. But Bribery has a very high chance to get um, Tirkvi. So I'm not going to do that just yet. I could put Mage Torture down uh, and grab something else, but... Especially for Coup de Grasse as well, I need something. I'm going to Coup de Grasse, the Duchess Informant. It's sad, because that's double assimilated that I'm giving away. Um, but I'm going to do Uncreate Warrior. On the Brockfar Hunter here, I'm gonna yeah armor up the warrior. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's getting harder and harder, isn't it? It's getting harder and harder to play my cards properly here. I lose out on assimilate value the longer I wait, um, and I don't want to purify just yet. So I think I'm just gonna play bribery now. Yeah, let's play bribery. Um, do I have any to the Fukusha? I could, you know. I could. I'm gonna Fukusha in the back into the Uncreate Warrior, because I have two of those. Uh, and I can just take down the Tuasark Invader and armor up something, that doesn't really matter. So I did lose that big on Assimilate value there. That was um, two Assimilate triggers. But now, yeah, the stuff is gonna come in. Uh, so that, that is Harold. I can purify Harold. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna purify Harold, then add spying on top of it. But first and foremost, I'm gonna do this. Uh, Blood Eagle is a warrior from my deck, but I don't think I have a warrior in my deck. Um, another Fukusha then. Yeah, it's gonna be another Fukusha. Fukusha in the front row. Uh, getting the Highland Warrior, and I'm gonna put him over here. And then I'm gonna armor up on the Imperial Diviner, which might get hit by something juicy, but at least we saw what our opponent has in hand now. So I can now put Spying on Harold, and then use Arto to... Oh, I can even put Spying on Fuku... on, um... <laughs> Do I still have... No, I don't have any other, um, other good, good cards there. I'm going to add more uh, armor, that's not bad, and I'm going to add Spying on Harold to Cripple. 
so I can Arto him in a minute. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Skellige units on the board right now. And there's a lot of rain on the opponent's side of the board as well. And now we get Blaze of Glory. No Jutta this time, so it's going to be an 8 that's going to go onto, yeah, the Torturer. That was fine. That was fine. Now we can put our toe down. Our toe onto Harold the Cripple. Harold the Cripple into the Uncreate Warrior. And the Uncreate Warrior can just hit something, I suppose. Um, I can hit Harold, maybe. Uh, and then armor up on... Arto Terra Nova. You don't get a Jutta on the opposing side of the board. We're two points ahead. This is going to be close. Because Blood Eagle is going to be Bran, I'm supposing. That's for Kusha. Ooh, Tirkvi. But Tirkvi isn't really that much of a problem. Uh, I can invocate Tirkvi. Um, I'm going to even... I could even armor up Terra Nova. Yeah, I'm going to armor him up. Uh, then... Yeah, invocate Tirgvi. And I'm gonna get, at this moment, I have five in the front and four in the back Skellige units. And they're not gonna die. So that's nine times two. That's 18 points on Shalemar. If I hear anybody saying that Shalemar is a bad card, here you go. Eat it. Because Shalemar is just, just incredible. These days, it's just a really good card. 22 points, Shelmar. GG. And there we go. I think uh, that showed off uh, quite nicely how powerful Rune Mage is in combination with Assimilate Double Cross. It's just really, really good. The amount of options you have with Shoop, um, and then of course with all the other Assimilate options, um, it's, it's just staggering. You can work your way out of most situations with Shoop. Um, you also have a lot of options to expand the amount of cards from your opponent that you have access to with Double Cross, with uh, Arto a little bit, but with just Rune Mage in general, Bribery of course as well, and then even, even with this tiny little tourney, uh, not tourney just Imperial Diplomacy card, it just broadens your selection so much that you should have all the options you need. Of course, there are a few matchups that are uh, a lot harder to deal with. Uh, I'm thinking about elves in, in, in particular, because they always have those, those tokens that they work with. Uh, it's a really hard uh, matchup there. Um, Northern Realms also outpaces you a lot of the time, especially the siege variations with stockpile. Uh, but other than that, uh, most of the matchups are really fine. This excels against dwarves, by the way. You can just pick their highest uh, units away from them and just double up on them constantly. And of course the squirrel, also don't forget about the squirrel, there's a lot of echo cards going around that you can just wipe away from the board. So very, very powerful indeed. Um, so there we go, that's the Shoops creation deck. And that's going to be the end of the episode, I hope you guys enjoyed it very, very much as much as I did, because I, I really like playing with Assimilate, especially with the Rune Mage now, it just gives you so many, so many options. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to just play around with it as well. Um, if you have any more feedback on this deck, uh, ways to make it better, I already mentioned the fact that you could swap out Kantayala for a card for a little bit more consistency in your deck as well. Uh, that's definitely an option, but there will definitely be more suggestions from people in the comment section. Don't hesitate to put that down below so you can continue the conversation over there, because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out in this amazing card game. Um, uh, we can also talk further on Twitter if you want. You can contact me at, at Trovinut, so that's T R O T R O V N U T, if you uh, want to continue the conversation there. I'm always open for suggestions for uh, other deck guides as well, so you can put those either on Twitter or in the comment section down below. Um, and I would be taking a look at all of that. So thank you guys enormously for watching and for the continued support, and I'll see you in the next episode of Gwendage. Goodbye and stay nutty.